Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the somebody loves you, you don't want to offend him. When somebody loves you and you fail to return the love, it can turn to hatred. That is why I'm going to speak today in this series of things God hates on he that sows discord among brethren. Come with me to the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 19. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that sowed discord among brethren. The scripture identified two sources of sowers. Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the Savior of our soul, who sows the Word of God into our hearts so that we can be like Him. And the second person, Satan, the devil, the enemy of our souls, he sows falsehood into us so that we can be like him and be cast out from the presence of God as he was. In the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 37 to 39, we read, He answered and said unto them, He that sowed the good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tears are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Why Jesus Christ sowed the wheat, that means the bread of life, into our hearts, whereby we grow up and develop spiritually and be in conformity with the nature of Jesus Christ, Satan, on the other side, so tears, that is, discord into the hearts of men to disturb the church. What you call tears are unwanted weeds, unwanted plants that disturb the growth of the original plant, thereby making the labor of the farmer useless. In Matthew chapter 13, from verse 25 
to 30. We read, But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tears? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Without then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. The Bible made it clear here that the enemy wouldn't have had the opportunity of sowing tears into the life of people had they not slept. The Bible said when man slept, what does that mean? The time you should wake up to pray and you refuse to pray. The time you should worship God and you refuse to worship God. The time you should go and attend services and join the people of God, you stayed at home to do what did not agree with the will of God. You have given the devil the opportunity to sow tears into your life. A sleeping church is a breeding ground for tears. You see, when you see a church... Where the worshippers there are sleeping, that means they are not active evangelically, they are not alive prayerfully, they are not alive in the spirit, they are so carnal in their thinking and religion in their comfort. It will be easy for the devil to put in tears, wrong teachings, you see, wrong practices, on and on and like that, things that are actually bringing shame to the Lord Jesus Christ. Sowers of tears are promoters of discord and confusion in the church. Some are easily identified, Why some are difficult to identify until their actions produce sour fruits in the church. See, there are some people, they parade themselves as members in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ but they were actually enemies of the cross. That was the title that Paul, the apostle, gave to them. Come with me to Philippians chapter 3, verses 2, 18 and 19. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the circumcision, 18 and 19. For many work, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind the earthly things. My dear listener, you will not be surprised at this. Look around you today. In many gatherings of so-called believers, you will see people propagating doctrines that are unbiblical, that are unscriptural, that are demonic, and that are inimical to the cause of the gospel. In fact, they succeeded in leading many people to hell instead of dissuading them from going to hell. It is my prayer today, by the grace of God, that you will not be a victim in Jesus' name. God is love, and love promotes brotherliness, concord, and peaceful coexistence. When you talk about love, love is not in any way dangerous. No, love is not in any way destructive. No, love promotes brotherliness. 
peaceful coexistence. Whereas Satan promotes hatred, distrust, and discord, which makes everyone suspicious of his or our neighbor. You see, many people today, even though they are attending the same church, they are so suspicious of one another. No, where there is love, the Bible said, perfect love casts out fear. If I genuinely love you, I will have no reason to doubt you. I will have no reason to doubt your sincerity if you love me and I love you. you see, but wherever there is any suspicion, wherever there is discord, wherever there is doubt, then something is wrong. Satan presents everyone as potential enemy to be avoided like plague. Wherever there is no truth, where people are sowing discord, they become enemies to one another. You see, Satan cannot succeed where brotherly love continues. That's why the Bible says, let brotherly love continue. When I say I love you, that means I want to seek the best interest of anything concerning you. I want to make sure that you don't fall into any trap. I did not present myself or become a stumbling block to you. Instead, I help you to achieve the goal for which God has created you. See, love among the brethren promotes the gospel. Wherever there is love, unfeigned love, the gospel is promoted because people will be encouraged because people who have problems will have somebody to bear their burdens with them. And that is what God wants. Now, what is discord? It is lack of agreement or harmony resulting in parting of ways or hatred of one or the other. That is what we call discord. Lack of agreement. When you sow the seed of separation, segregation, misunderstanding, that is discord. It is the presence of schism among the brethren. See, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 25, 1 Corinthians 12, 25, that there should be no schism in the body but that the members should have the same care one for another. Here, Paul the Apostle was using the picture of the human body. Every part of the human body contributes and works together with the other parts for the common benefit. And that is exactly what God wants believers to do. I should be able to work with you, you should be able to work with me, we should be able to work as household of faith together to advance the kingdom of God. Who are brethren? When we talk of brethren, you see, they are those who have made profession of the same faith, the household of faith. They are the community and congregation of those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That is why Jesus Christ said, you are brothers, you are brethren. Irrespective of where you come from, the very day you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, every other believer is your brother. Every other believer is your sister. There is no racialism in Christianity. No, there is no schism in the church. No, there is nothing like that. The Bible said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son without asking their ethnicity, their tribe, you see, or anything. For God so loved the world. As long as you are a member of the word of God, that means the church, I should be able to love you. You should be able to love me, not minding my color, not minding your color. No. Why? Because the same spirit of God lives inside all of us. If the spirit of God lives in me and the spirit of God lives in you, your color or my color doesn't matter. You see? 
when the Spirit of the Lord moves in me, it makes me ready to obey God. It makes you ready to obey God. And when we are under the same Holy Spirit, definitely our thoughts and everything with it will come together in line with the will of God. They share the vision and mission of Jesus Christ. These are the people we call brethren. That means believers who share the vision and the mission of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is the vision of Jesus? What is the mission of Jesus? It is salvation of souls. And let me tell you, anything you do, as far as Christianity is concerned, must zero in on salvation of souls. When it doesn't, then you are sowing discord. God wants you to note that. How is discord sown among brethren? How? Number one, by idolizing material blessing. See, this happened between Abraham and Lot. You knew the story? God called Abraham. And Abraham said, fine, my nephew, come and share with me of the goodness of God. And Lot went with him. And the Bible said because of Lot, because of Abraham, God blessed Lot also. But when blessings came, the Bible said there was problem between the husband of Abraham and Lot. And Abraham said, we must not fight, for we are brothers. You see, if you go to the right, I go to the left. And that was the beginning of the separation, which eventually led to destruction of Lot. We need to be very, very careful. You see, it is not something bad for you to be rich or for God to bless you. In fact, it is the will of God for you to be blessed. I want you to come with me to Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 26. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. You see that? God wants you blessed, but not in sin. And one of the ways you can continue in sin is when you idolize materialism. You seek the blessings of God instead of God himself. That is very, very dangerous. See, because that one will make you to be proud of yourself. Money has become a serious issue of contention among the brethren today. They worship mammon instead of God. There are many people today, they measure the yardstick of their divine acceptance by the measure of money they have. The Bible says a man's possession, you see, is not, a man's life does not depend upon the amount of the things he possesses. You have to be very, very careful. You cannot serve God and mammon. Why God wants you to bless be careful that money did not push you into sin. Number two, people sow discord among brethren by sowing the seed of discouragement among brethren. See, they make people to disagree. Like I was saying last week, see, they tell lies, blatant lies, and so make people to become enemies. See, because of hatred and jealousy and things like that. This was responsible for the destruction of the Israelites in the wilderness. You see, look at Aaron and Miriam. They were jealous of their brother Moses. See, and other people joined them. And what did they do? They said, this man Moses is getting too tough on us. Let us appoint somebody to lead us back to Egypt. They discouraged people. Look at what they did again. When God sent them to go and spy the land, there were 12 of them. God protected them. Nobody arrested them. Nobody molested them. And they brought a copy of the fruit of the land to authenticate what God said would take place in the promised land. But do you know what they did? Ten of them gave a very bad report. 
and they poisoned the minds of the people. They said, the giants are there. They will finish us, and we are like grasshoppers before them. You need to be very, very careful. When you say you are a believer, you must involve yourself in the ministry of encouragement like Barnabas. Instead of the ministry of discouragement like the ten spies, the Bible said, God said, turn back into the wilderness. And they died roaming in the wilderness. Unfortunately, because of sowing the seed of discord in the church, some in the church today are roaming in the world until they die off. It is my prayer that you will not be one of them in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, number three, by instigating others against constituted authorities. You see, when you instituted people to rebel against constituted authority in the church, see, you are sowing discord among brethren. In Numbers chapter 16, verses 1 to 3, you are going to see how Korah that and how the paradigm, how they instigated people against constituted authority. We have to be very, very careful. See, there are some people, they wanted people to follow them whether they are right or wrong. That is rebellion. Sectionalism, tribalism, ethnicism, racialism, all these are odious to God. You see, the Bible says in John chapter 10 verse 16, it said, All that food I have, which are not of this, they also I will bring. So that there will be one fold and one shepherd. God is interested in the unity of believers, not in the disunity of believers. This was very important. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. There you get the first discord in the church because of ethnicism. The Bible says some people were being neg neglected in the church, tribalism. We need to be very, very careful. If you are a believer, as I was telling you before, I am your brother. You are my brother. Irrespective of where I come from, number four, people can bring problem into the church by selfish pursuit of power. See, there are some people, God did not call them into an office, and they will say, by force, they must occupy that position. God did not call them to lead the church and they want to control the church. When you do that, you poison the mind of people against the authorities. You convert or divert the word of God. You are sowing discord in the church. When you turn to the book of Third John, you are going to see an example of somebody there. Third John, it has only one chapter, verses 9 and uh, 11, it, it says, I wrote unto the church, but diatrophies, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren and forbidden them that would, and casted them out of the church. Beloved, follow that which is, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. You see that? There are many people like the Diotrephes today. They are seeking for offices in the church. The offices God has not called them to. Maybe because they are financial members. Maybe because of their education. Maybe because of their exposure. Maybe because they see people around are too low for them. They should be the one to lead them. Let me tell you the truth. Leadership is a cross. And if God did not call you into leadership, you will do more harm than good. That is why you need to be very, very careful. Positions and church offices are no guarantee of salvation. See, they are merely for administrative convenience in the church. That you are a pastor, that you are a senior pastor, that you are a regional this, that you are a superintendent, that you are a bishop, doesn't earn you salvation. No. See, Number five, by preaching wrong doctrines or heresies. 
when you deliberately pervert the truth of the word of God because you want to gain followership, you are sowing discord among the brethren. Therefore, how do you escape that? Number one, be bold and take a stand for the truth like Caleb and Joshua. Caleb and Joshua, they were two of the 12 spies and they presented a minority report which belongs to God. The same thing. Don't follow the multitude to do evil in your life. Number two, be decisive for God. Joshua said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. When other people are saying no to God, you say yes, irrespective of what it will cost you. Finally, value good name. Value good name like Demetrius. You see, don't be like Diotrephes. Value your name. Don't destroy the name of God. Let brotherly love continue in you. When you do this, not only in the church, when you do this in the community, when you do this in, this in your family, when you bring this into play in your marriage, you will have a paradise on earth. I am praying God that the Lord will help you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to thank you because you are God. And I pray that all those who are sowing the seed of discord in the church will stop forthwith in the name of Jesus, but that they will sow the good seed that will lead to salvation. Thank you, dear Holy Spirit, for this enabling grace. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. See you next week. And as you prepare for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, remember, don't sow discord among the people. May the Lord bless you. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Are you washed in the